All right, well, our first section of this particular chapter on introduction to anatomy and physiology is really going to focus on differentiating between actual anatomy and physiology. So if we focus on anatomy, the key information that we're looking for here is the idea that anatomy is really talking about structure. We're talking about exactly what everything is made of within the human body. We're talking about how bones are fitting together, how muscles are working together, right? how everything kind of works right, or appears within its structure. Uh, when we look at the particular word anatomy, we're really looking from Greek anatomy to dissect. Right? So we're looking at anatomy, we're cutting apart. So anatomy really is about dissection. And for those of you that are aware of it, you know, anatomy to learn the majority of the information in anatomy requires dissection because the majority of anatomy is deep within the body as opposed to superficial. So it's going to be a bit harder for you to learn everything if you're not actually dissecting all the parts to find the structures. Anatomy can also be broken down into different categories. For example, there's gross anatomy. And by gross, I'm not talking ew anatomy, gross. I'm talking about macroscopic. Macro meaning large. This is looking at the large scale structures, such as body parts like muscles, bones, organs. It's not really getting down to the little finite things. Gross anatomy can also be divided. You can have regional anatomy, systemic anatomy, surface anatomy. Right? You can break it down and kind of specify exactly what type of anatomy you're looking for. Are you looking to study your anatomy by particular areas of the body or sections, which would be your regional anatomy? Or are you looking to study one system at a time? For example, the skeletal system versus the muscular system, if you're looking to do your systemic approach to your anatomy. Surface anatomy, you could be looking at the internal structure related to the area of the skin. Surface anatomy is a huge area that's used in medicine. Um, when doctors palpate, when they feel on the surface of your skin for particular organs and particular structures for swelling and such, they're really looking at surface anatomy. They're knowing where those internal organs are, where those internal structures are in reference to where they're pressing on the skin. So all of these different subcategories of anatomy have their place. You can also divide your anatomy into microscopic anatomy. Maybe you're not looking at the gross anatomy, the large scale. You're looking at the more finite things. You're looking to study your cells and tissues, right? Cells and tissues, you're obviously going to be using a microscope, hence the microscopic anatomy, right? Cytology, histology, these are going to be types of focusing within microscopic anatomy. You can also focus into developmental anatomy. So when we look at gestational periods and gestational development for organisms, you can look at how structures change as the body progresses through development, whether certain things ossify, how things develop, certain structures that appear in development, right, that may not be there initially, but may develop as time continues. Embryology is the most common area of developmental anatomy. You're going to be looking into how the embryo develops and be able to determine what period of development the embryo is really in. Physiology is going to be another stroke, another area of science, right, that we're talking about, and we're really talking about function. So when we look at anatomy and physiology, we're looking about structure and function and how they're working together. So when we talk about the function, we need to specify how these things work. There's no point in learning the anatomy if you're not actually going to be able to focus on the function of those anatomical parts. So Usually, you're going to focus at a cellular or molecular level. It's because those cells and those molecules and how those cells and molecules work that the particular structure works the way that it does, and therefore, the anatomy functions the way that it does. Physiology, we break down the word. Again, our Greek breakdown. Physicists for nature, or really what we're for focusing on is our origin and logia studio. So we're really studying the origin or studying how things are working or coming to be functioning. We can break down our physiology just like we broke down our anatomy. When we break down physiology though, oftentimes we focus on a systemic approach. Neurophysiology versus cardiac, 
respiratory, right? So you're really going to be talking about how particular systems are functioning when you talk about physiology. The continuation of our subcategories for physiology, reproductive physiology, so exactly how those organs are functioning within the reproductive system. All right, so as you can see, it really focuses on a systemic approach. The most important thing is really to recognize that anatomy and physiology complement one another. They go together, which is why we study them together. All right. Our really big point is right here, that the functional role or the physiology of the body really depends on how it's constructed. How a particular body part is designed, developed, built, what its structure is, is what can be used to dictate its function. Uh, for example, joints have their particular structure so that they can perform their particular role, a hinge joint as opposed to a ball and socket joint. All right, contractile muscle tissue has that particular structure for its function of contracting. So those parts of your body, right, are going to work together, perform their functions in order for the whole body to be able to work properly. That anatomy and physiology really go hand in hand. This is a image that we have from Body's exhibit. I really think that this picture is a perfect example of how anatomy and physiology or structure and function really do go hand in hand. It really demonstrates the idea that the structure of the human body is a huge component of the function. You see here with the throwing of a baseball that it's only because of how the human body is structured that that motion is really even possible. And then what I want to know is whether you can think of particular ways that anatomical structure can determine function, right? If you can think of example, examples, like for example, the joints that I was just mentioning or contractile muscle tissue. It's important for you to think about how exactly anatomy and physiology really do fit together.